You are listening to Living Streams, our weekly feature based on the Bible. In this series, we reflect on the fascinating book of Psalms, rightly called the prayer book of the Bible. There are 150 songs in the book of Psalms. They are divided into five books. Each of these books concludes with a doxology or a praise to God. Some of these Psalms are about God and some are address to God. The Psalms have a wonderful capacity to capture our human experiences. They express our emotions and feelings. In every experience of our own, we can find Psalms which echo our inmost being. The Psalms lead us through the valleys and peaks of human experiences and in the end guide us to the praise of our loving Creator. We are in the season of Lent now. This liturgical cycle began last week with Ash Wednesday. It is a season that reminds us of our need for repentance and reconciliation with God and with one another. This season of Lent calls us to conversion, conversion of our hearts, attitudes and approaches. Hence, during this season, we shall reflect upon those psalms which are used in the liturgical celebration of Lent. So today, we shall reflect on Psalm 91, which is used in the liturgy of the first Sunday of Lent this year. Psalm 91 is without a title, and we have no means of knowing either the name of its writer or the date of its composition with certainty. The Jewish doctors consider that when the author's name is not mentioned, we may assign the psalm to the last named writer, and if so, this is another psalm of Moses, the man of God. In the whole collection of 150 psalms, there is not a more cheering psalm than Psalm 91. Its tone is elevated and sustained throughout. Here we see faith at its best. He who can live in its spirit will be fearless. Let us now listen to Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. We have just heard a part of Psalm 91. The first part of this psalm, verses 1 and 2, describe the state of the godly. The rest of the psalm we heard depicts the habitation of the godly, their servants and their friends. It is impossible to imagine anything more solid, more beautiful, more profound or more ornamented than this psalm. The blessings here promised are not for all believers, but for those who live in close fellowship with God. Every child of God looks towards the inner sanctuary and the mercy seat yet all do not dwell in the most holy place. They run to it at times and enjoy occasional approaches, but they do not habitually reside in the mysterious presence. But to those who reside there, the veil is rent, the mercy seat is revealed, the covering cherubims are manifest, and the glory of the Most High is apparent. 
Special grace like theirs brings with it special immunity. Outer courts worshippers know little what belongs to the inner sanctuary. Otherwise, they would have pressed on until the place of nearness and divine familiarity became theirs. The omnipotent Lord will shield all those who dwell with him. They shall remain under his care as guests, under the protection of their host. In the most holy place, the wings of the cherubim were the most conspicuous objects, and they probably suggested to the psalmist the expression he employed here. Those who commune with God are safe with him. No evil can reach them, because the outstretched wings of his power and love cover them from all harm.